Hey, g'day guys, it's Adam from Video Show Me How. And in this video, we're gonna be installing one of HSP's tailgate locks into our Isuzu D-Max X-Train. Let's get started. So if you have a dual cab, you will know, and certainly on the X-Trains, that if you lock your, lock your car like this, the problem is that this still opens. This is this isn't part of the part of the central locking. So even if even if we're locking unlocking, you can still get in to your tub. Just incidentally, if you're interested about these tailgate locks, tub locks, check up the uh, the top of the video here because we did a install on that just recently. Pretty cool. Makes a big difference. But yeah. So anyway, the locking unlocking doesn't impact this. It's not part of the central locking. But never fear, there is a kit for that. And that's what we're gonna be installing today. We're gonna to be putting this guy in. The tailgate lock syncs to your existing remote. So it basically just turns uh, this guy into part of your central locking. So when you lock everything else, this guy locks as well. So let's get started. So great news guys, just like our last video, if you haven't seen that one yet, head on over. The legends at HSP have got on board and they have a tail lock system for us to give away to one of you guys, which is pretty awesome if you ask me. Now, if you want to know how you can win one of these shipped directly to your door, just check out the description below. It'll have the one or two steps that you need to do to get yourself in the draw to win one of these. The absolute bonus is you'll also have this video on how to install it. So pretty awesome. If you're interested in winning one of these for yourself, check the description below for all the details on how you can win one. So if we open this guy up, it does come with everything you need here, and it is it is a complete kit, which is which is always awesome. If we open this up, you can check out what we get here. So of course, some zip ties, even down to the zip ties that come with, which is pretty cool for running our loom. We have our piggyback controller here this is the piggyback wire that sinks into the central locking in the front there we have our actuator which is what locks and unlocks our rear tub a lock and even nice little bracket here that's going to bolt all that together and then our fully insulated and conduited wiring loom that will run from our tub all the way snake its way up hence the uh hence the cable ties, snake its way up to the module that's just under the driver's kick pad. So step one, we need to sort our stuff out here and what goes with what. So basically, these couple of things here go together as well as a little screw and we'll do that in a second. The first part really is our actuator. So we can put zip ties, harness, wiring loom, put all that to the side for the moment. The first part is to grab your actuator, have it the white side down, so your, your little sort of uh, nodule, node, whatever you want to call it, is on the right. Grab this little part, and that needs to that needs to slot into into there. And you can see how there's sort of a little notch out there. So this is uh, interesting to do one-handed. But so there we go. Once it's in, nice and easy. Just note that there is a little bit of a channel down the guts of it here. So you just got to line that up and use your muscles and uh, and push him home that's that part ready to roll then we want to move on to the bracket itself so grab your components that you're going to need so each of these you want to position the bracket so it's sort of in in this kind of orientation this lever then needs to get pushed through the bracket just like that with the the hook part facing you so get that one there like that then you want to grab the steel part, the cylinder piece, look for the notched end and the hole and have that facing you. And you can see what's happening here. We're going to get that hole lined up to that one and then we're going to screw it together. So just push him through like that and push it through so you can see the slot notches into that section there and then you should be able to see all the way through for your screw. And then for the screw, what you're looking for is this little guy and he just needs to get screwed in there just as a bit of a locate screw to keep it all together. 
The next step is to attach the actuator to the bracket itself. So if you get that guy and have that ready to go, it needs to be in that orientation again. Your actuator then will sit through there so you can kind of see the two bolt holes and same on the actuator. They sit in there just like that. You want to have the this can, uh, wire and loom connection at the front. So have it oriented just like that. And just make sure before you do start tightening down on anything, this section here needs to go in the hole. So just uh, drive it home there, just like that. And then line up your holes so that you can screw in from the back. And that's kind of what you're shooting for. So once you've got it set up just like that, it's just a matter of tightening these down. So it should end up looking something like this. It's really important that the actuator itself is nice and tight and stiff. That gets the best performance with the lock and unlock function. From here, it's a matter of getting ready to start installing into the back of the tub. So you wanna grab your wiring harness section here itself and get this ready to go. So you wanna find this end and it connects straight in there like that. Find your two tabs on the top, clicks into place. Something like that. From here, we are ready to go and we're ready to install it into the back of the tailgate. So what we need to do here is get to the locking mechanism which sits about there, which means we need to take these guys all off. And the easiest way you can do this, you'll see that in there there's a little a little tab so you can get a little flathead in here and pop these guys up and out. All right, so once all of these are exposed, you can see they're just a Phillips head. So grab your screwdriver or your drill or your ratchet screwdriver or whatever you got at hand and start removing those. And once you're done with those, you will need to keep these, right? You're gonna have to reuse them. So put them in a safe place, not one of those safe places that are so safe you never get to find said item again. Just a safe place aside that you can get these when you're putting it all back together. And then to get the rest of this out, you can see you've got your seal under here. So you're gonna have to sort of pry that back. And at the same time, then you can lift this guy out. From here, you can see there's a panel that runs along here. And here's our little bolt holes that we just started in. We need to now undo each of these to be able to remove this panel for access to the actuators. And same story with these, make sure they go in that safe place that's not that safe that you can never find them again. And then this section should come up and away. And there we go, the inside of our tailgate. And more importantly, here's our actuator and locking mechanism that we're gonna sort of bolt onto to turn it into a central locking version. So to install our bracket here and our wiring loom, we can bring that over. How this is gonna be situated is in under there, just like that. So what we need to do is we need to remove a couple of bolts. So this guy here and this guy here, we need to pull those out. And then also these three arms, so one, two, three, need to get pulled up and out. So if you just give it a tug like that, same on these other two. And this guy here as well. Just be careful with your little uh, washer there. We'll retrieve that in a sec. Remove these last two, and then we're ready to bolt this guy in. So once you're at this step, that's kind of how the bracket is going to be oriented, except it's going to go down in here. So it's going to sit in like that, except under here. So just wiggle its way in under there and get it ready to be bolted into the factory holes. So this is what it looks like when it's in position. So you can see our holes are lining up on either side. Grab the remaining two screws. You're gonna have a short one and a long one. The short guy goes on the left-hand side into this factory hole here. The right hand goes into the locking mechanism here. So drive those, drive those home. And then from there, it's then about reconnecting each of our rods. Now these don't need to be infinity tight. Once again, they just need to be regular tight. And that's our bracket in. What we need to do to be able to do that is now connect up 
each of our actuator rods so it's just to push in and then use its little staying clampy plasticky thing there once again drop him in there clamp it around and the final rod just needs to get slot in there don't forget to use your washer as well that needs to slot onto the back side you can see there's little sort of ribs in there and what the washer will do is just keep that locked into position so once you've got this guy installed the next part is to run our wiring harness all the way down the front so you can see you can start underneath here so it's up out of the way at the back here there are a number of existing wiring looms let's turn the light on there you can see but there is a big hole just here and that's um, nice and easy to get to to then run this underneath through your existing grommets right underneath so that it pops up through the firewall on the driver's side so there we go all nice and run through and if we get underneath here we can see that that's come out just in here same place as this so that's going to be your first zip tie there is to keep these two wiring looms together at the top there just like that and then from there here's our chassis rail nice and nice and new and clean but you want to run similar to where this is running which runs all the way across the top of the chassis rail same story with all of this lot run it all the way down your chassis rail so that it spits out at the engine bay because we want to go up along the firewall and then back in to the driver's kick pad to plug this guy in so that's our next step once you're done you need to go and pop the pop the bonnet and then well, what we're looking for here is you can see uh, there's our wiring loom down the bottom there so we want to snake him up and this is the big grommet that we want to input so that's the main that's the main down in there the main grommet through the firewall into the cabin which is what we want to tap into because because this terminates right sort of at your accelerator pedal there's that's where we use that last part of the wiring loom so from here grab your loom that you've got sitting down the bottom there snake him up under these hard lines here so that it can't go anywhere or can't fall onto sort of your steering rack obviously this part here gets pretty hot being your turbo and dpd and that sort of stuff so rally him underneath underneath that and over here and ready to go through into the cabin and then basically you can make a small incision in the rubber grommet i recommend pulling this out first so just really stick with it and you'll be able to pop it out eventually make a small incision and then run your cable through it is all rubber so it's just a matter of stretching the stuff um, and you'll get there eventually once you've run that through you're not going to have heaps of cable left so you may have to go back underneath and and make sure you don't have any slack spots but once you've got that sorted the white connector push it through and then you can retrieve it from inside the cabin now the loom that we're going to be bolting into is behind this panel so you can see that we don't have far to go but to get this guy off we need to remove this first and then that panel there now to get this guy off it's just a matter of pulling up all the way along and should just pull out you may need a flat headed screwdriver but just be careful with it so that you don't damage your duco and then the only bolt that you need to remove to get underneath this kick panel which is what we need to connect all this all this whole thing up is this little hex nut so grab a socket just like that and you should be able to pull this panel away just be gentle pull it out from underneath the seal and it should pull out just like that you've got your little christmas tree plug here as well and that just pops into there so all right once we have that sorted we have access to everything we need to connect our central locking loom into the rest of the central locking now the switch that you're looking for because there's a whole bunch going on here is actually this guy here underneath now each of these are sort of these little uh, little modules I guess and you can pull these out so just get a firm grip and it's got one of these little body mount Christmas tree dobs now to, to take this out 
there's a little tab at the back here you just need to pull that push that down and pull out now what we need to do now is basically insert our loom that came with so this attaches in to this guy here so just line him up and clip him through just like that this end then replaces where it was so clip that one in there just like that and you can just slot your module back into the body there and the remainder this guy connects in with what we've routed through from the engine bay so once we're done in here before we go buttoning everything up final step in the engine bay itself and that is to just put a gob of silicon over the top where you've put your incision just to make sure everything's still super watertight and make sure that you push the grommet back where it came from it will just sort of pop back into place so make sure we do that and then what we want to do is do a test so before we sort of put everything back together in here before we close our kick pad and then the scuff pads in here we want to close all the doors otherwise it won't let us do this test because we want to make sure that it all works and before we can imagine we sort of put all this back in screw it all back together put all the plates back in blah 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 and you press the button and nothing happens so uh, if I've been there before best thing to do is just to test it first to make sure this is all done right so if we close that up and we hit the lock button that means this now is locked and if we hit the unlock button hey, hey so there you go simple as that all locked brilliant so from here now that we've validated that everything works we want to come back around to the driver's side we want to put our trim pieces all back in make sure this is nice and tucked up we want to reinstall each of our trim pieces that one in there with our hex bolt there and then our scuff pad along the side here as well and then our final step is to put all this back together so it's just reversing the process of what we did when we were pulling it apart your plate goes on there all of your safe place stored screws go in composite tray that goes back in through the top here and all screwed down so there we go all nice and plugged back together sorted let's give it a give it a test so we'll close him up grab some grab some keys lock button no getting in there unlock hey, hey works like a charm so that's all for this one guys i hope that you found that helpful for installing a tail or lock in your tailgate for the isuzu dmax if you haven't already check out the channel the stacks of other content and we're doing the full build up on the isuzu dmax the new whip for the channel so check it out there's going to be plenty plenty of content coming out as we build it up we'll be doing install vids for all of them so if you haven't subscribed to the channel as yet be sure to do that hit the little bell icon which is the notifications bell so that every time a new install video comes out uh, you get the little notification saying it is live and you're ready to watch it whenever you feel like it other than that guys as always i hope that you have an amazing day and i will see you in the next video cheers guys